Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Today's most interesting story to me actually isn't news. It's about Claude Code creating Claude Code. But there was so much news that's happened over the last week or so as we've been in holiday episodes that I gotta rip through a bunch of stories before we get into that. Starting with XAI continuing to double down on compute with the purchase of a third building to expand their facilities outside of Memphis. Now, if you guys were listening closely when I talked about Grok as part of my 2026 predictions, I said that basically they were going to have to do something to break out from the back of the pack. I was not, however, pessimistic about their ability to do so. And the thing I pointed out as the most likely contender for how they could start to do that is basically taking advantage of more access to compute through Elon's fundraising and operational prowess. And already we have a story that points in that direction. The information reports that XAI has purchased a large warehouse in southern Mississippi, just over the border and a few miles south of their existing data centers. At the moment, XAI has one data center operational. That is their Colossus supercluster, which was built rapidly in 2024. After rolling expansions, it now has around 230,000 GPUs operational in a single coherent training cluster, making it the largest in the world. Alongside Colossus in the same industrial park, the Colossus 2 data center is still under construction. In July, Elon Musk said the goal is to install 550,000 Blackwell GPUs and that the first deliveries were underway. XAI now says that they have 450,000 GPUs operational across their facilities. The third facility is still at its earliest stages, but Elon Musk is clearly setting his sights on dominating training compute. Confirming the reports earlier this week, he posted, XAI has bought a third building called Macro Harder. We'll take XAI's training compute to almost two gigawatts. Now, Musk is seemingly referring to plans to build an AI-first Microsoft replacement called Macro Hard, as opposed to Microsoft, get it? But he also might just really enjoy the joke. So far, none of the hyperscalers have completed even a one gigawatt data center, but many, including OpenAI, are racing towards this milestone in 2026. Alongside their third data center, XAI is also making progress in constructing their own natural gas power plant in the surrounding area. This will be one of the first power plants built specifically to power AI infrastructure. Next up, some model news. OpenAI is renewing their focus on audio models, seemingly in preparation to release their first consumer device. Once again, according to the information, OpenAI has consolidated engineering, product, and research teams to overhaul their audio models. The report stated a new audio model to drive voice mode is expected to be released in the first quarter of this year. Citing sources with knowledge of the project, the information wrote that the model will, quote, sound more natural and emotive and provide more accurate, in-depth answers. It will reportedly handle interruption more easily and can even speak over the user when appropriate, something current generation voice models can't do. Now, the assumption is, of course, that the model is a key part of OpenAI's Johnny Ive-designed consumer device, which is expected to arrive in about a year. And even if the form factor is still a little uncertain, it's pretty clear that Sam Altman and Johnny Ive believe a voice-only interface is the correct move. We also continue to get reports at various levels of verification around what OpenAI has planned for their device. One recent report suggested that it's a pen-shaped device, although there also might be multiple form factors. One interesting sub-detail is that according to Citrini analyst Yu Can, while the device was originally expected to be contract manufactured by China's LuxShare, due to strategic considerations around a non-China supply chain, OpenAI has shifted course and is now looking for ways to manufacture it outside of China. Speaking of non-China AI supply chains, NVIDIA has closed their deal to invest $5 billion into Intel. The deal was struck back in September, with NVIDIA securing a price of $23.28 per share in a private placement. At the time, that was a slight discount to the market price, but Intel stock is now up 50% since the deal was announced, making the deal even better for NVIDIA. NVIDIA will now own a roughly 4% stake in Intel, and more importantly, will have a vested interest in supporting a revival in their foundry business. AI chip making is capacity constrained at the moment, so the ability to bring new fabs online in the US is key to NVIDIA expanding their production. For Intel, the deal is viewed as a major financial lifeline for a company that's been facing a severe capital restriction. Staying on deal-making for a moment, SoftBank is stepping up their AI investments with a new $4 billion deal to acquire Digital Bridge. Digital Bridge is a private equity firm heavily involved in data center funding. The all-cash deal will see SoftBank acquire the entire firm, paying a 15% premium to their public market valuation from Monday's announcement. SoftBank CEO Masayoshi Son said in a statement, As AI transforms industries worldwide, we need more compute, connectivity, power, and scalable infrastructure. Digital Bridge is a leader in digital infrastructure, and this acquisition will strengthen the foundation for next-generation AI data centers. Now, the acquisition is clearly part and parcel of SoftBank's larger AI build-out. The firm partnered on OpenAI's Project Stargate at the beginning of last year. Then, over the summer, a string of reports suggested that funding was an issue. Now, SoftBank will have an in-house private equity partner to ensure a pipeline of funding to their AI projects. 
Digital Bridge currently has around 108 billion in infrastructure deals on their books, which include cellular towers and fiber optic networks as well as AI data centers. Digital Bridge will still fund their projects through outside investors, meaning that SoftBank could have greater access to capital. Separately, SoftBank confirmed on New Year's Eve that they'd completed their $40 billion investment in OpenAI. A final payment of $22.5 billion was due by the end of the year, but reports suggest that it was far from a smooth process. SoftBank sold their $5.8 billion stake in NVIDIA and $4.8 billion in T-Mobile to fund the deal. On top of that, in mid-December, Reuters reported that SoftBank was tapping margin loans against their arm stock in a last-minute scramble to come up with the cash. SoftBank doesn't lack assets, but was liquidity constrained after the government shut down delayed the IPO of a portfolio company called PayPay, which was expected to net $20 billion for them. With the deal now closed, SoftBank owns roughly 11% of OpenAI and seems to be eager for more AI dealmaking. Meanwhile, Canadian asset management giant Brookfield is spinning off their own cloud business to take advantage of the AI boom. The information reports the new business will be tied to Brookfield's AI infrastructure fund, which was launched in November. The fund will have a cap of $100 billion, but currently has $10 billion in commitments from investors including NVIDIA and the Kuwait Investment Authority. The fund is currently developing data centers in France, Qatar, and Sweden. Overall, the idea is to lower the cost of AI infrastructure by leveraging Brookfield's scale and vertical integration. The firm has over a trillion dollars in assets under management, including a heavy emphasis on energy and real estate. Writes Reuters, a cloud business would allow the company to control inputs of the AI value chain in a way inaccessible to pure play cloud providers. Finally, what I said was most interesting to me in today's headlines is Claude Code writing 100% of Claude Code code. The rapid growth of AI coding was, of course, one of the key inflection points for 2025, and some of the creators of the technology are astounded at how far it's come. Claude Code creator Boris Cherney posted over the holiday break, A year ago, Claude struggled to generate bash commands without escaping issues. It worked for seconds or minutes at a time. Fast forward to today. In the last 30 days, I landed 259 PRs, 497 commits, 40,000 lines added, 38,000 lines removed. Every single line was written by Claude Code in Opus 4.5. Claude consistently runs for minutes, hours, and days at a time. Software engineering is changing, and we're entering a new period in coding history. And we're still just getting started. Now, the comments caused some to do a double take, asking Cherney if he really meant that he hadn't manually written code in the last month. He responded, Correct. In the last 30 days, 100% of my contributions to Claude Code were written by Claude Code. Ethan Malik wrote, In retrospect, the articles mocking Dario Amade's prediction of 90% of code being written by AI by September seem to be very misguided. He seems to have only been off by a couple months, if that. And indeed, less than a year after Andre Karpathy coined the term vibe coding, Claude Code is now good enough to write Claude Code. Speaking of Karpathy, he went viral over the holidays for a take on the rapid advancement in AI coding. He wrote, I've never felt this much behind as a programmer. The profession is being dramatically refactored as the bits contributed by the programmer are increasingly sparse in between. I have a sense that I could be 10x more powerful if I just properly string together what has become available over the last year. And a failure to claim the boost feels decidedly like skill issue. There's a new programmable layer of abstraction to master, in addition to the usual layers below, involving agents, sub-agents, their prompts, context, memory, modes, permissions, tools, plugins, skills, hooks, MCP, LSP, slash commands, workflows, IDE integrations, and a need to build an all-encompassing mental model for strengths and pitfalls of fundamentally stochastic, failable, unintelligible, and changing entities, suddenly intermingled with what used to be good old-fashioned engineering. Clearly, some powerful alien tool was handed around, except it comes with no manual, and everyone has to figure out how to hold it and operate it, while the resulting magnitude 9 earthquake is rocking the profession. Andre ends with the most salient advice for the moment, roll up your sleeves to not fall behind. That will, of course, be one of the key themes of the AI Daily Brief this year. For now, that is going to do it for today's headlines. Next up, the main episode.